Hello and welcome to uh, this, uh, welcome to another edition of, of course, the uh, Football House updates here on uh, the Gambia Football Federation social media networks, wherever you may be right now. I am Amadou Oba, your host, and uh, in this morning's edition of our Football House updates, we'll be uh, taking a look at um, the Gambian domestic leagues, that is for both domestic league one, division one and division two, and uh, my guest this morning is no other than the, uh, the GFF competitions manager, Mr. Muru Jan, whom I'll be uh, talking to in a short while. Uh, just to remind you once again that the Football House updates will be coming to you on all social media uh, platforms of the Gambia Football Federation, where you can follow us live on Facebook, on uh, Instagram, on, um, uh, on, on, on YouTube. And of course, my technician this morning is Omar Toure, and the program has been produced by Mr. Babu Kamara, the Director of uh, Marketing and Communications, Gambia Football Federation. Well, going straight to the point, like I said, this morning, my guest is Mr. Modu Jai. And uh, without much ado, I welcome you, Mr. Modu Jai. Good morning. Mr. Murujan, I know the competitions department right now who um, currently is uh, uh, quite a busy office these days. Yes, quite rightly so. Um, as I was about to introduce myself, I had a call coming in, but I'm back online. Uh, thanks for having me. It's an honor to be on your show. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Murujanya, like I said in my introduction, this morning we'll be taking a review uh, at uh, the first division league first. We start with that in the Gambian domestic leagues. But before we go further, uh, let's take a moment back. I mean, uh, for quite some months ago, there has been no football activities. And until recent in January, the Gambia Football Federation I mean, uh, announced the resumption of uh, the Gambian domestic leagues for division one and division two male. Um, how did you come to that? Well, obviously, um, we know football is the lifeblood of Gambia leagues. In the country, football is the lifeblood of many of the you know, leaders and, of course, the young. So it was a really um, boring time, if I can use that word, during this uh, pandemic period. Uh, obviously, it was justified because we had to take precautions you know, to help this COVID to spread. So there was no football for all this while. But um, after what, nine, ten months, we actually started again. And it's been a relief for the masses. It's been a relief for our department, and obviously for the Gambia Football Federation, as you know. Because football is what we are in for. And um, yeah, it's, a, it's been a relief to have the ball uh, rolling again. Mr. Mr. Murujan, I, I must beg your pardon. I am not, I'm struggling to hear you from my end. I believe yes, uh, I am also uh, having that same issue here. Yeah, I don't understand it. How is it? Is it is not? Is it better? Yeah, it's 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 quite um, not it's um, low, right? affected. It's it's not yet all right. I'm struggling to hear you. Mr. Jain? Yes, I can hear okay. you. Okay, now it's it's clear now. Uh, thank uh, you so much for that. Yes, thank you so much for that uh, brief. I mean, um, introduction to the resumption of the uh, domestic uh, leagues in the Gambia. Uh, now let's let's take a look at it. Of course, um, it's quite too early. We've just um, played um, two weeks into the um, domestic fixtures, domestic league fixtures. That is for both Division One and Division Two. But let's start with uh, the uh, first division. That is the top league in the Gambian domestic football. I mean, quite some interesting encounters, especially in week one and two, counting five draws almost, um, teams sharing points apiece. How interesting are the games looking at the first and second week of the fixtures in Division One? Well, at this point, we've had some surprises. Also, we've also had um, teams that are traditionally known to be front runners. Um, so far, we can, you can't say much after two weeks of play, but all indications are that um, the usual suspects in the first division are going to be vying or um, um, for the for the title this season. As you can see, um, Real de Banjul and uh, Armed Forces are on six points from two games. Mm -hmm. We've also had some surprises, um, uh, teams like Hawks and Gamtel, who are usually perennial uh, heavyweights in our league. 
they've suffered the first two weeks of, uh, first two weeks of the season with uh, consecutive defeats, um, meaning that it's a long season. We have 28 rounds more to go. So it's a little bit early seasons to be uh, making predictions and suggestions. However, we've had some good football under the circumstances. We've had some really good following from the masses. Uh, it seems like people missed football for so long. Uh, even at Basuri, where it's really uh, the most difficult ground to get to logistically, um, it's also one of the best grounds we have for football reasons. Um, um, people have been actually entering. The, 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 the natives of um, Fonyi, Fonyi East uh, are definitely not complaining because football is in their turf right now and they've been good support. Yes, uh, let, let's talk about, I mean, so, some of the big wins in the, in the fixtures of the week one and two for League Division One. Um, Gambia of course is like you said uh, right now on top with uh, Real de Banjul. Um, it's quite too early to tell now but you can already sense uh, quite a bit of interesting moments um, heading into uh, the, heading deep into the I mean the, the, the fixtures of, of, of the force but let's take a look at Gambia armed forces I mean they've secured one of the biggest wins in, the, in, in uh, just last week um, against um, Hawks um, in a game that ended 4-2. And of course, in week one, also BK Milan, I mean, uh, beating um, Gantel by three goals to one. Uh, of course, there's another observation that compared to the second division league, uh, we're not seeing quite that margin of goals in, in the fourth division. There's a tighter, I mean, uh, margin of goals in the fourth division than the second division. But tell us about the goal scoring and the, uh, the high mode of competition in the fourth league. Yes, um, as you know, uh, we've traditionally had less goals in our uh, first division in the past years because the second division, there has been more goals. But that aside, focusing on the first division, we've had 17 goals in the first round of matches out of uh, seven, seven fixtures. Mm -hmm. um, of those goals, the biggest surprise of the first week was uh, BK Milan uh, trouncing Gamtel, three goals to one. And uh, obviously, there were also some surprise uh, results. For instance, um, uh, Elite United beating Hawks, uh, two mm -hmm. goals to one. That was a surprise result for many, um, actually. But the, the games are played at tighter margins. Um, I think the, the coaches are also, even though we're having goals, they are trying to use the uh, safety first mentality, make sure that they uh, not concede and then try to win it. But I think um, it will pick up because the first few weeks, all the teams are fresh. Uh, all the strategies are working because the boys have the legs under themselves. But as the, as the season progresses, um, there will there'll definitely be some separation between the legitimate contenders and also the mid-table teams, as well as those that are expected to be fighting to avoid relegation. So the goals have to pick up, um, but I'm sure it will in time. Talking about Gantel, they are uh, struggling at the beginning of um, the, the league uh, in both fixtures. They haven't won yet. Um, been defeated by BK Milan in the first fixture of week one and uh, coming again to play against, of course, um, in the second week against Real de Banjo and uh, lost a goal to Neil. Um, what is your assessment and, uh, for, for Gantel? Well, Gantel, I think um, in the long run, they will find their feet. Uh, they, they know the league. They've been in here for decades and they have pretty much the same team. Even though they did have some key players transferred to other clubs, um, they still have a core a group of players that are capable of competing. I, I really don't see them, it, you never know in football, but I, I really don't see them struggling for uh, avoiding relegation come end of the season. As you mentioned also in week two, we saw a, a great result in Hawks versus Gamtel at the stadium, I mean, Hawks versus GAF, Gambia Armed Forces. I was at, uh, present at that match, and it was a joy to watch. It was a joy to watch. There was offensive football through and through, and the best scoring offense won. At some point in the game, momentum shifted towards Hawks, and they could have killed the game. They didn't. Gamtel were more mature, they were more clinical, and they scored some good goals. 
So we like to see results like this, where teams go out and play to win the game and not try to lose the game, and try not to lose the game rather. So these are the these are the things that we look forward to because it's a spectacle, and every spectator, even the Hawks uh, supporters that came there, were satisfied with the quality of the match. Uh, significant draws, like I said earlier on, again, uh, notably become a United versus Walidan in the, the first week, 1-1. Gambia Ports Authority, GPA versus Banjul United also 1-1. And of course, in the uh, week two fixtures, Banjul, Marimu, Marimu, goalless, Elite, Brikama again, I mean, uh, goalless. And you come again, you have um, Fortune and Talending, um, 1-1. I mean, how do you wait? I mean, the, the, the occurrence of these um, draws, in the first division league? Um, I think it all comes back to um, teams trying not to lose games. Um, they are being too cautious, I, I believe. Um, clubs like Birkama, I'm surprised that they've scored one goal out of two games. I'm sure Coach Modlamin will not be satisfied. <laughs> they should be working on their strikers and their uh, offensive organization to get more goals. Um, likewise, we've seen, um, like you said, two draws in the first week, and then we had three draws in the second week. That's a trend that is not encouraging to us. We'd like to see less draws, more wins and losses, which means that teams are actually going out to win games, uh, or whether they win or not. And that is more attractive to the uh, to the neutral, to the spectator. And, uh, and I think uh, all coaches should be looking at that and checking out this statistics as a measure and a yardstick for them um, in games that are to come. What do you think might have been the reason for um, such, I mean, results or outcomes? Uh, like I said, I know it's too early uh, for us to just judge the teams based on their performances right now, but uh, let's take a little moment um, um, of history. I mean, we know we came from a very uh, long break. Um, due to COVID-19, and we know there must have been some transfers. Uh, there was a transfer window being opened and players must have switched clubs. Um, that could also be another contributing factor. But uh, as an expert in this domain, what could you do you think would have been another contributing factor as far as these results that we are seeing are concerned in the beginning of the league? Well, there is not so much difference between the clubs. You go from uh, team number one to team number 14 and on it, Anybody's good day, anybody can beat anybody. And uh, if you employ a very dogged and uh, 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 an organized uh, scheme of setup of the way you are formed, it's quite difficult to be penetrated and, uh, and uh, to lose games. So I, I think, again, I cannot think of many reasons why there are draws. Um, there are many draws other than the fact that it's the start of the league. You don't want to be left behind. And everybody, like you said, these are new teams. Some, some okay, not new teams, but these teams have new players uh, who are just betting in. And it will take some time for some. Others, I think um, it might be just the way that they are, uh, they are created to play. It's the way they train. Um, they, they're too expansive in the way they approach the game. I think that has been an issue, uh, especially in the first division. In the second division, we've had something different. But um, these are these are things that I think the coaches' association have to look into and look at their individual statistics and the manner in which they approach these games. Hopefully, it becomes more of an offensive uh, approach than a defensive approach. Mr. Muru Jan is the competitions manager, Gambia Football Federation, and uh, my guest this morning. A reminder that this is the Gambia Football House updates um, coming to you live on our social media uh, platforms, and I am happy over. And we're taking a look at a review of the uh, domestic leagues, that is for both Division 1 and Division 2, starting with Division 1. A rundown of uh, just last week, some... Um, um, score lines. Banjul United um, had a goalless draw with, uh, of course, uh, Marimo at the Independent Stadium zeros. Uh, GPA 2, BK Milan um, 1 after their uh, first week um, victory over Gantel. Uh, Gantel came back again. Uh, they uh, were defeated by Real de Banjul by a goal to nil. And the LH United goalless draw against Brikama. And uh, Gaff also uh, had a I mean, the biggest win against Hawks, four goals to two. And Fortune uh, won, Talendi United won at the National Technical Training Center. 
and uh, Walidan Wabanjul, of course, Walidan and Neil Wabanjul won. Uh, Mr. Jan, in week three, um, earlier on, you did send a press release indicating some rescheduling of uh, resch rescheduling of some of the games in week three, notably games that were supposed to be played at the Independent Stadium in Bakau uh, have been rescheduled and uh, perhaps or has been changed to another uh, venue uh, based on the availability of uh, the unavailability of the independent stadium. Uh, uh, take us through that. Yes, um, unfortunately, our independent stadium is the host for many functions in the Gambia. And mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, certain, certain organizations or certain um, groups, we have to be uh, we have to be considerate and be I guess um, a second string and we have to reschedule our matches. In the case of these reschedulings, um, there is going to be um, the launching of the NPP party at the national stadium, and um, we are not having the stadium available to us from the 27th to the 31st of January, which falls on this week's matches. So all those games that were supposed to be scheduled at the stadium, um, one of them uh, was uh, tomorrow's game, which was Young Africans and Jara West. This has to be moved, and uh, it's already been communicated to all the clubs and the people, the stakeholders concerned. And the game will be played um, on the 6th of February at the stadium when it's available. There's also a game that was uh, scheduled there tomorrow um, between Steve Biko and Immigration. But due to the tight pack schedule and um, availability of grounds, it has been moved to the 28th of February um, at the stadium as well, which uh, this is subject to change. If we can move it forward earlier, we will do that, but we will communicate. But as it stands now, that's what it is. And there's also another, the first division, it's affected um, games between Walidan and BK Milan, which was to be played on Friday. In fact, it will be held on the same day, but it has been moved to Basuri. Yeah. So Friday, Walidan will play uh, BK Milan in Basuri. And then Banjul United's game, um, scheduled for Saturday, Saturday, the 30th of January, has been moved to, uh, to Basuri as well instead of the national stadium um, and finally the last fixture affected by this will be gambia armed forces against wabanjo uh, which uh, will be played on tuesday the 9th of february but in basuri instead of the stadium so these are the adjustments we had to make and uh, it's unfortunate um, we have to get the league going because uh, we have a calendar to adhere to Thank you very much. Now, moving forward, uh, let's take a look at, of course, uh, the second uh, division league. Um, interesting encounters in the first week and uh, week two of the second division um, fixtures at the Gambia Football Federation. And uh, Mr. Mumudu Ajan, the competitions manager, uh, we've seen some notable, I mean, high margin victories. Bombarda, Bombarda in Samga, three goals to nil in the first fixture. And of course, um, PSV Willingara. Uh, I mean, going home with four good goals mm -hmm. and three points against um, Second Infantry Battalion in week one. And of course, um, the likes of um, Jam City, Latukunda United, all going home with a win, BK, uh, before you, Kiang West, I mean, all going home with a victory. Uh, take, let's take a look at week one of the Second Division encounters um, in, in, the, in the Second Division League. Yes, um, as expected uh, from our prelude of the first division, there were more goals um, in the uh, for second division league. There's one extra game. There's usually eight round, um, eight matches per round and seven matches per round in the first division. So just a difference of one game. They scored 25 goals in the week one. Obviously, the standout fixtures were the 4 nil dropping of second infantry by PSV Willingara. And there was also um, B for you, Kiang West was the surprise result, beating Red Hawks 3 1 in um, Soma. And of course, uh, Bombarda uh, dropping Samga 3 0 in the opening rounds. These were the standout fixtures, actually. But um, PSV have kept their consistency uh, as well as uh, Kiang West, as yeah. obviously as well as um, Latakunda United, who are all on six points. Um, so 
going by the looks of it, Red Hawks also beat Infantry four goals to one in the week two. So yeah. the goals, it seems, Infantry are the ones that are really in trouble. The signs are definitely not good. Uh, one goal scored, eight goals conceded over two games. Uh, shows that they need to buckle up or, you know, they might be left behind. Um, teams like Red Hawks, who were beaten by uh, before you Kiang, bounced back in the second week and won. Obviously, I just mentioned that against Infantry. Mm -hmm. um, Kiang keeps winning so far. Um, second, second week of the uh, Division 2, the goals were a little bit less by six. They scored 19 total goals. Mm -hmm. I think that's just a sign of things being tightened up by the coaches, um, maybe not taking too much risk. Indeed. Um, compared to or contrast to the first division league, we've seen uh, a high margin of goals in the, uh, in the in the second division. But again, like you said, perhaps uh, it's too early to tell until teams will be taking their time not to I mean, concede too much goals, but as well to be defensively conscious uh, during the game. Uh, I mean, looking at the teams like Immigration Department, I mean, teams like um, Falcon, Steve Biko, um, also coming forward to see what they can do in, in its second division. Are you foreseeing any of the previous bottom teams making it to the top uh, or trying to, I mean, battle from relegation? It's definitely early seasons. Um, anything is possible. Again, um, like I said in the first division, there's still uh, 28 games left. Mm -hmm. In fact, the mm -hmm. first division has 24 games left. There's 28 games left, and mm -hmm. by three, that's uh, that's 94 points to play for, or 84 points, if my math is correct. So anything can change. The bottom team, even though it's um, infantry at this point, they have the chance to turn things around and even win the league. That's if they can do it on the field, of course. But it is mathematically possible. So there is nothing lost so far. Um, teams that are winning, uh, it's really good. But hopefully that will make them become complacent. Teams that are losing are going to tighten up their belts and know that it's a dogfight to climb up the ladder. So as usual, we look forward to a very, very uh, well-competed second division league for the promotion places. There is the likelihood that we might have four teams promoted with the expansion. It's not confirmed yet. So that's extra motivation for all these clubs. Um, we'll see how that will, you know, figure into their plans going into the season. Talking about um, motivation, um, just a question came to my mind um, with regards to the uh, previous annual general meeting that the GFF held earlier on and uh, made mention of the awards that awaits these um, um, winners of the domestic leagues. Um, tell us about the awards of the fourth division and second division. Remind, of, uh, remind us of the awards in place. Yeah, um, obviously everything comes from the executive committee um, led by the president, uh, Mr. Kabar Bajo. And during the annual general meeting, it was decided along with the clubs and all the stakeholders involved that the, the purse or the price of winning the leagues or being second have been um, <clears throat> substantially increased uh, to win the national League Division One, uh, a first price of seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars is is the first price. Um, obviously, with the other uh, things like the medals and all the trophies. And uh, in the second division, <coughs> for second place, yeah, I believe it's five hundred thousand, and it goes down from there. Uh, the women also have. We are going to talk about women's football because we are all in this together. Of, they of have course. also. Been substantially increased. And I don't want Saini Sisoho to come after me. I'm sure she's watching this. <laughs> they will say, in fact, I, I was going to... Uh, it was one of my <laughs> random questions I was going to put forward to you. Ah, there you go. I mean, when, when, when are we going to see the beginning or the reception of Women Football League? Uh, but we'll come to that later, perhaps. Let's, let's just yeah. continue the trend that we are in on the male division. All right, all right, all right. So, yes, the post uh, has been substantially increased. I don't want to make uh, <clears throat> a false statement because I don't have the numbers in my table, uh, but maybe you can help me out and I can take it from there, if you do, actually. 
Yes, yes, indeed. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Mourijan. We will come back to that. Um, let's let's look at the games that have been postponed again or rescheduled. Um, uh, let me put it that way. In the second division, uh, week three, you made mention of Steve Biko and immigration being, uh, uh, I mean, rescheduled for the 28th of February, 2021, at the Independence Stadium. The venue remains, and that will be next month, um, according yes. to uh, the one I got. And also, Young Africa versus uh, Jara West. Uh, to be played on the 6th of February on uh, Saturday at the National Technical Training Center instead of the stadium at 4 p.m. Correct. Uh, Correct. But for this, today, there are games today for the second division league, right? Hello, Modu? Seems I'm struggling to get Mr. Jan online again. Mr. Jan is the competitions manager at the Gambia Football Federation and a reminder that this is your weekly, I mean, uh, domestic league reviews for Division 1 and Division 2. And uh, we were just looking into the fixtures for today, this afternoon, on uh, League Division 2, where before you came, West will take on Team Rhino at the Soma uh, Mini Stadium at 4 p.m. And this afternoon again, Latrikunda United takes on Red Hawks at the National Technical Training Center at the same time, 4 p.m. And uh, whilst Bombarda will travel to uh, Basuri to take on Serakunda is by ISB at 4 p.m. in Basuri. These are the three fixtures. The other fixtures for Wednesday and Thursday um, have been rescheduled. That of Steve Biko and Immigration have been rescheduled and will be taking place on the 28th of February on Sunday at the Independent Stadium. And of course, Young Africans and Jara West have also been rescheduled for Saturday the 6th of February 2021 at the National Technical Training Center. Meanwhile, on Thursday at second division, at second division, uh, we will also take on, we will see second infantry battalion will be traveling to um, Bellingara, uh, will be traveling to the National Technical, excuse me, second infantry battalion on Thursday will take on Samga uh, at the Soma Mini Stadium, while Jam City will also play PSV Bellingara at the National Technical Training Center on Thursday, 28 January. Meanwhile, the same Thursday also will see Gunjur take on Falcons at Basuri on the 28th of January, 2021. Interesting fixtures coming ahead in the first division league. We will also uh, give you a roundup of uh, what we are to expect this Friday in the games coming. Walidan versus BK Milan has also been um, rescheduled, but the date remains on Friday. Walidan will play BK Milan, but uh, the venue has been changed and that is Basuri instead of the independent stadium like you heard from Mujan due to the unavailability of the independent stadium for week three. So Walidan versus BK Milan will be played at Basuri on this Friday, 29th of January, 2021. We will also see Hawks will take on Talendi United now. Earlier on Talendi United did uh, uh, have a draw, a 1-1 draw against Fortune, um, uh, Fortune FC in the week two fixtures of Division 1. They will take on Hawks who have also uh, lost to GAF in the previous fixture. Um, Talene will take on Hawks at the National Technical Training Center on Friday, 29th of January, 2021 at 4 p.m. The game between Banjul United and Great Karma has been rescheduled. Um, the date remains the same, Saturday, that yet, but the venue has been rescheduled to Basuri instead of the Independent Stadium. And of course, Fortune will come back to take on Giants Royal de Banjul at the National Technical Training Center on Saturday, the 30th of January, uh, 2021, before we uh, wrap up the week three fixtures for Division One on Sunday, where Gantel will take on Marimu at the National Technical Training Center, and an elite who had a previous draw against um, uh, Brigama United, uh, um, against um, elite against Brigama United 0-0 in the previous fixture, will take on uh, Gambia Ports Authority, GPA, who also um, defeated BK Milan in the previous fixture of week two. Now, Elite will take on GPA at Basuri at 4 p.m. Before uh, we also see another rescheduled match, of course, that is between Gaff, who are on top with Royal De Banjul with six points, taking on Wa Banjul on Tuesday, the 9th of February, 2021, um, at Basuri instead of the Independent Stadium. Um, instead of the Independent Stadium. That is for Gaff versus Wa Banjul. Interesting fixtures. Like I told you earlier on, um, this is going to be another interesting uh, week to watch out for in week three for both the first and second division league. The second division kicking off this afternoon, later this afternoon, where before UKM West will take on Team Rhino 
another interesting encounter to watch out this afternoon at Soma. I know um, uh, our neighbors, the uh, Kiankas, are already um, eager to see their team in action again against Team Rhino as they host Team Rhino at 4 p.m. Latakuda United again, another uh, big goal going forward with a great start into the league against Red Hawks. Will be taken on at the National Technical Training Center. These are two games to watch this afternoon with Bombarda traveling to Basuri to take on Serakuda SB. Another great game to watch later this afternoon. You reminded that this is the Gambia Football House updates coming to you live on our GFF social media platforms. And I am Mr. Amadi Uba, the GFF Media Assistant, and Mr. Muru Jan is my um, guest this morning. Muru Jan, moving forward, let us take a look at. Um, having uh, spoken about the fixtures and uh, reviewed the previous um, weeks, and of course, um, taking into consideration these fixtures for today, week division two, uh, week, uh, week three of division two, and of course, week one, uh, week three of division one altogether. Um, in summary, um, where do you see the competitions or the domestic leagues in the Gambian football going forward to in 2021 season? Well, um, I see that it's going to go forward and the quality will improve in Gambian football, that is certain. But to, for short term, we have week three coming up in our national leagues. Uh, we have a cracker in, in form between b for uk and West and Team Rhino. Exactly. Team Rhino are known for playing very good, fluid football. Mm -hmm. And b for uk and West are... Uh, are actually a team that is surprising many, not themselves. They expect to be where they are. They've steadily improved over their three seasons in the league. And uh, with good administration, they've been doing well. And it will be very interesting to see whether they can continue the trend of winning now that they are facing a team like Ryan, who actually lost to Latte Kunda United, a very close game played out in Basuri last week. Uh, I'm sure... Rhino will look to get something, but B for you are home. Uh, so um, it's going to be an interesting tie. There's also Latakunda United and Red Hawks. That's also a very good game. It's a very good fixture. It will probably um, end up being one of the hotly contested games this week. Uh, Red Hawks have come back from a defeat and then won in week two. Latakunda are yet to take defeat. And if I am right, I'm not even sure if they have actually, they've considered one goal. So they are tough not to crack. They are not the prettiest side playing football, but they are dogged and they get results. They know how to grind out results. So that will be an interesting uh, matchup um, that will be played over at the uh, Gold Project in Yundum. Uh, obviously, Bombarda and SK Eastby. There was one big surprise result which we missed out in week two, which was SK Eastby be beating Steve Biko. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So, after losing the first game, so we're going to see if um, they, they are actually, uh, whether it was a fluke uh, or whether they are actually, you know, made of what they are showing so far, because uh, an opponent like uh, Bombarda, who also have been doing tremendously well, uh, they have aspirations to be back in the Division 1. So it will be an interesting market. Then Jam City, PSG, Willingara. Both teams, I think, are on six points. Yeah. Or maybe Jam City is on four points. Jam City. I don't mm -hmm. have the table in front of me. Um, this is one of the big matches of the week. Uh, both teams are expected to be high up in the table come the end of the season. Mm -hmm. And both teams are known for playing very beautiful football. Jam City have been impressive. And uh, of course, PSV Willingara with uh, Coach Van at the helm. They are still going from strength to strength. And they are fancy their chances of getting back into the top division. So playing against a team like uh, 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 Jam City, you want to take points there. Or Jam City want to take points from PSV. This will be a deciding game come end of the season, even though it's early. 
Um, then we have second infantry against Samga. Both teams have struggled so far. So you expect both teams to fancy their chances and try to start getting points together. Um, sure. Second infantry, they are still learning the ropes in the second division. Um, last year, they were doing a little bit better than the year before. And we hope that that trend continues and their recruiting and their preparations uh, can pay off so they, they can stay in the league. But on the other side, Samga is also known for being <laughs> up and down. And uh, we want to see what kind of Samga will show up this season, whether they're going to be struggling or actually fighting for promotion. And the final, the final uh, fixture is Gunjur and Falcons. Gunjur also <laughs> have been consistent. Falcons are also finding their feet. But they have been known to upset the big teams. So it will be something to look out for that will be played on Thursday. So these are the, these are the fixtures for the week. And we expect to see goals. We expect to see uh, attractive football. And we expect to see the fans there. Even though we would advise to actually practice social distancing, to bring a mask if you can, make sure you have a hand sanitizer if you don't look for, uh, if you don't have it, Try to find a way to wash your hands and, you know, let, let us protect each other. Let's not only think about ourselves. Let us protect each other so the league can continue. Because if we start having infections, we might go back to those days where we Indeed. all stay home and we can't do much but wait for things to subside. Indeed. Uh, Mr. Murujan, I, um, I am afraid that uh, that is all we have for this morning, this special edition of the uh, weekly reviews of our domestic leagues. And we will catch up uh, next Wednesday. A reminder that it will be coming every Wednesday at midday. But before we go, uh, remind us of uh, the latest press release um, you've, uh, that came from the competitions department on suspensions. Um, uh, tell us about, about, about them. Hello, Mr. Murujan? Yes, actually, it stems from the organizing committee, which we work under as a department. Yes. They give us the mandate to do the thing. I'm here. Can you hear me? <clears throat> yes, yes, I can hear you. Hello. Okay. Um, we have been mandated very well. We have been mandated by the GFF organizing committee to make sure that all clubs come to the uh, venues, the match venues, with all the players' cards intact. Mm -hmm. It's been, as you know, we are going into the third week of the season. And it is, uh, it is quite disappointing that certain clubs are yet to have their paperwork in order. Obviously, there is nowhere in the world, whether FIFA or CAF or any competition, where uh, a match official can stop a match due to a player not having a license. These things are considered administrative issues, and those belong to the clubs. So for us to uh, actually try to improve on this, the organizing committee has decided that any player that shows up to a match venue without his player's card or with an incomplete player's card will be charged a thousand dollars. This will be taken from the club they can pay directly, or if the club does not agree to pay or does not pay in time, it will be subtracted from the FIFA subventions that the clubs get. This is just to encourage um, professionalism. It is not witch hunt and it is not to collect money. The thousand dollars is, is put there as a deterrent because it makes no sense when you have free card to fill out and there is nothing charged for that. And there's still teams that don't have this. We have to try to have a professional mindset moving forward in our battle football to make this game a success in the Gambia. That's that's the message from the competition department. Thank you so much. Any final message before I take a leave of you, Mr. Jai? Uh, just, just come out, watch our games, practice social distancing, bring a mask if you have one. If you don't have one, use a cloth against your mouth and nose. Don't sit too close to people so that the football season can be played to the end. Without the fans doing that, we have a risk. We're risking something that we all don't want. We don't want to go back home and sit and watch from the TVs. So that's my message to everybody. Enjoy the week.
Thank you so much. That was my um, uh, um, guest this morning, Mr. Muru Jain from the Competitions Department, uh, Competitions Manager, Gambia Football Federation, uh, live on the Gambia Football Federation's um, uh, social media platforms with me, Amadou Oba. Of course, uh, before I take a leave of you, let's take a look at the fixtures this morning. Thank you so much, Mr. Muru Jain. Uh, Wednesday, the 27th, we have uh, B4UK and West will take on Team Rhino at Soma, and uh, we'll also have uh, this afternoon, Natukunda United will take on Red Hawks at the National Technical Trading Center uh, this afternoon. And uh, Bombada will be traveling to Basuri to take on Serakuda SB uh, later this afternoon. Tomorrow, Thursday, still in Division 2, uh, we have Jam City will play Wellingara, PSB Wellingara at the National Technical Training Center at 4 p.m. Second Infantry Battalion will be coming back to action against Sam Samga FC at Soma, whereas Gunjur uh, will take on Falcons at Basuri on Thursday. And that will be the end for uh, March, uh, week three for second division, as other matches have been um, have been uh, postponed or rescheduled. That is for Steve Biko. Immigration will take on the 28th of February on Sunday at the stadium, whereas Young Africans versus Jarawes have also been rescheduled to the 6th of February at NTTC. In Division 1, still on the fixtures, later this weekend, we will see um, uh, Walidan versus BK Milan. Their venue has been changed to Basuri instead of the Independent Stadium. We'll also see uh, Hawks take on uh, Talending United on the same Friday at 4 p.m., uh, whereas uh, the game on Saturday, um, Banjul United, Brickhammer United has also been rescheduled to take place on Saturday at the uh, at Basuri. That is the Leave Your uh, Dreams Football Academy. On the same Saturday, Fortune versus Real de Banjul at the National Technical Training Center. Another encounter to watch. Gantel will take on Marimo on Sunday at NTTC, and of course, Elite United will uh, come back to action against GPA it, at uh, Basuri, that is the Live Your Dreams Football Academy. Whereas Gav Basos Wabanjul has been rescheduled for Tuesday, the 9th of February uh, 2021. In the table, let's quickly round up on the table the first division. Um, of course, Gav and Real de Banjul share point, six points each. Um, GPA on goal difference, of course. Um, with Gav on top of the table. Um, Gabby Post Authority, four points. Elite United are uh, still with Elite United on points, uh, four points. And of course, Fortune FC as well, four points. Whereas BK Milan, Wabanjul FC uh, also share three points uh, with goal difference. Banjul United, Brickhammer United all on two points with goal difference. And Talending United, uh, Walidan FC, Maribo FC all on one point before we have Hawks and Gantel on zero points. In second division, we have PSB Wellingara and uh, Jam City and uh, before you, Kiang West all on six points alongside Latikunda United, six points. Bombada on three points um, alongside Red Hawks. Uh, Serekunda SB and Sanga FC all on three points uh, before we have uh, Steve Biko on two points, whereas Falcons FC, Gunjur FC, Immigration, Team Rhino, Young Africans, Jara West all on one point. And at the bottom, we have Second Infantry Battalion. And uh, like Mr. Jan rightly uh, said, we will be taking a look at the women's uh, domestic leagues set to resume very soon by the grace of God. We will be taking, to, uh, I mean, uh, a look at series of activities and events as they unfold from the Gambia Football Federation here. Well, this is all what we have for you on this special edition of the Football House Updates. From me, Amadou Oba, special thanks to my technician, Omar Toure, and of course, Mr. Babukar Kamara, the communications and marketing department's and director and the producer of this program. Until we come your way, special thanks to my guest, Muru Jain. See you next week on Wednesday. Bye-bye from us.